Now, just as with the case of real repeated eigenvalues, complex eigenvalues, they're not so easy to work with. But we have to take the universe the way it is, so let's jump in and deal with complex eigenvalues. Now, when it comes to those blocks in the Jordan canonical form, I've been a little bit deceptive. I said that it's simple. You just have these blocks with the lambdas along the diagonals and the ones on the super diagonals and zeros everywhere else. But what happens if lambda is complex? That's not a problem if you're a mathematician. If you're in linear algebra class doing the Jordan canonical form, no big deal. But things are a little different here in dynamical systems. We want everything to be real. We don't want complex valued solutions to our nice real differential equations or real recurrence relations. We really need to, as they say, keep it real. So what we need to do is convert everything back to reals. Here's the way I like to think about it. The big idea is that if I have a complex conjugate pair, if lambda is really alpha plus or minus i beta, then I can represent this complex number as a two by two matrix, alpha, beta, minus beta, alpha. That is, it's alpha i plus beta j, where by i, I mean the two by two identity matrix, and by j, I mean that wonderful two by two matrix zero one negative one zero that is like the imaginary unit in the j squared equals minus i. Now, oh my gosh, there's so many i's and j's running around here. This is so confusing. I'm so sorry. But the idea of replacing your complex numbers with two by two real matrices that algebraically behave the same way, that is called a representation of the complex numbers into the space of two by two matrices. Very, very cool. This is gonna be helpful to us. Now, so far, this is fine. This is just like we did in 2D, but what if we have that Jordan block with repeated eigenvalues, with repeated complex conjugate pairs of eigenvalues? What do we do in this case? Well, we have to, if you will, blow everything up. Every number in this Jordan block has to become a two by two matrix. So we're going to get this big block matrix where along the diagonal blocks, we have alpha, beta, minus beta, alpha. And then off the diagonals, we have zero blocks everywhere, two by two zero blocks everywhere, except for that super diagonal where instead of ones, what we have are two by two identity block matrices. Ooh, that's a little complicated looking. Fortunately, we're just not gonna be seeing this too much. I mean, it is possible to get repeated complex eigenvalues, but I'm not sure that we're gonna see it in the entire rest of this series. So yeah, you have to know that this exists and that there's a way to deal with it, but man, this does not look like fun. Nevertheless, we must persist. So let's compute exponentials, powers of these matrices. Ooh, might get a little complicated, but in the simple case, it's not so bad. It's gonna be just like 2D. If we have lambda equals alpha plus or minus i beta, that complex conjugate pair, then I could equivalently write it in polar form as r e to the plus or minus i theta. Remember how that works then this is gonna be just like the 2D case back from volume two. Our Jordan block J is alpha beta minus beta alpha. Oh man, I'm so sorry about this notation that there's a J, but J means something else. Oh boy, what do we do? I don't know, we're just gonna to have to keep going. I gotta call it something, I'm calling it J. Sorry about that. Let's do the continuous time solution to the linear system first. Remember that E to the JT is the two by two block e to the alpha t cosine beta t, e to the alpha t sine beta t, minus e to the alpha t sine beta t, and e to the alpha t cosine beta t. Cool, the real part is giving you the exponential growth or decay, and the imaginary part is giving you the frequency of rotation. Excellent, now in discrete time, it's a little bit weirder because we need to use that polar form. This two by two matrix, J, if I raise that to the nth power, 
then taking that polar form with radius r and angle theta, then what I get when I compute j to the n is the two by two block, r to the n cosine n theta, r to the n sine n theta, minus r to the n sine n theta, and r to the n cosine n theta. Now this is the nice case, the simple case, the 2D case, just like in volume two. We still have to do the case of repeated complex eigenvalues, where instead of this two by two block, we have this two by two by j block, where there are like j repeated complex eigenvalue pairs with just one complex eigenvector pair between them. Ooh, it's kind of a mouthful. This is more involved, but well, I am dedicated to giving you the full story with every possible detail. So here it is, the final answer to the repeated complex eigenvalue case is given by the following expression. 